Dmitry Mendeleev in the History of the Periodic Table. Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian polymath who conducted studies into many fields of science, is known for creating the modern periodic table and correctly predicting the properties of several undiscovered elements. Building upon the work of scientists before him, Dmitry Mendeleev published the version of the periodic table that would come to be the periodic table used across the world to this day and revolutionized modern chemistry. Dmitry Mendeleev was born in Tobolsk, Siberia, at the time belonging to the Russian Empire, on February 8, 1834, to Ivan Pavlovich Mendeleev and Maria Dmitrievna Mendeleeva. Dmitry was the youngest of 17 children and, like his siblings, was raised as an Orthodox Christian. Because of the number of children the family had, the family did not have much money. Dmitry's father worked as a professor at a local gymnasium, teaching arts, politics, and philosophy. Unfortunately for the family, Ivan went blind when Dmitry was young, and Dmitry's mother was forced to take up work at a glass factory, meaning the family had to move to the nearby town of Arimzyanka. Several years later, the factory was destroyed by fire. While Dmitry was attending the Tobolsk Gymnasium at the age of 13, his father passed away from tuberculosis, leaving his family almost without a source of income. As more and more of Dmitry's siblings left home to go to work or university, Dmitry's mother decided to place him into a university as well. Dmitry and his mother traveled to Moscow, where they stayed with a relative while the Moscow University considered admitting him. The Moscow University did not admit him, as the law at the time was that students could only attend universities within the city where they attended the preliminary gymnasium. Dmitry and his mother tried again in St. Petersburg, where Dmitry was accepted into the main pedagogical institute. Shortly after Dmitry's acceptance into the institute at St. Petersburg, Dmitry's mother died along with his younger sister, who at the time was in St. Petersburg. Dmitry was alone in St. Petersburg, continuing his education, which was going exceedingly well. Dmitry was fascinated with chemistry and physics, as well as applied mathematics, and worked hard to learn any subject, no matter what it was. His professors were astonished at his eagerness to attend lectures, complete assignments, and even take on extra work. As Dmitri's education continued, he became ill with what doctors perceived was tuberculosis, and in 1853 was hospitalized due to the severity of his condition. Despite the condition, Dmitri took the examinations and achieved the highest marks possible. With the help of friends and professors, Dmitri was able to fully recover and graduated from the institute in 1855. Even before Dmitri had graduated from the main pedagogical institute, his professors had begun trying to find him a job due to his exceptional talents in science. When Dmitri graduated, he moved to Simferopol in the Crimean Peninsula, where his professors had managed to find him a job as a teacher. Dmitry had considered moving to Odessa before his exams, and after a short stay in Simferopol, he was asked to replace a teacher in a school in Odessa. While in Odessa, Dmitry heard news of a delegation of Russian scientists whom the Russian government planned to send abroad to learn of scientific progress in other European countries. He attempted to join the group and was accepted, but could not go due to unexpected delays. While he waited for the trip, he became a magistrate of chemistry. Finally, in 1859, Mendeleev took a train from St. Petersburg to Warsaw and from Warsaw began his trip through Europe. After traveling around the most renowned universities of Europe, Mendeleev decided to stay in Heidelberg, Germany, a town known for its science as well as a sizable Russian population. Within weeks, Mendeleev had managed to become friends with several known scientists in the area. Deciding to create his own laboratory in the house he was living in, Mendeleev took a short trip to Paris to obtain necessary supplies. Mendeleev's first experiments and examinations would be conducted about the phenomenon of capillary action, water's seemingly gravity-defying ability to flow upwards in tight spaces. After studying capillary action, 
Mendeleev went on to study isomorphism. Mendeleev had written his dissertation thesis on how isomorphism alone could not determine the structure of any organization of the elements, and the topic would help him to later construct his periodic table. European scientists before Mendeleev had considered isomorphism closely related to specific volume, and Mendeleev's work touched upon the subject. Mendeleev found that isomorphism was actually not closely related to specific volume. However, specific volume did present Mendeleev with interesting patterns that seemingly connected groups of elements. For example, elements that reacted vigorously in reaction, namely the halogens and alkali metals, had higher specific volumes than less reactive elements. Periodicity of the elements had been noted by several prominent scientists before Mendeleev, such as Johann Wolfgang Doberiner, who created triads of elements, and John Newlands, who grouped all the known elements at the time into seven groups. Mendeleev continued his experiments with specific volume, and also conducted studies into critical temperature and adhesive forces between atoms, bringing him to discover and name critical temperature and pressure. When Mendeleev returned to Russia in late 1861, he found that he had no money and took up work as lecturer anywhere he could find. Alongside lecturing, he also wrote two textbooks on organic chemistry, the first of their kind written in Russian. The book was partially inspired by new discoveries in chemistry that Mendeleev had seen in Europe. The field of organic chemistry was still in its earliest stages, and Mendeleev's books sold thousands of copies. Mendeleev was drawn into organic chemistry by the organization of the homologous series, in which he believed he could find a clue to the organization of the elements. Mendeleev also worked on domestic matters, such as natural and chemical fertilizers. Some prominent scientists at the time believed that phosphate and calcium fertilizers could boost crop growth, while Mendeleev's tests showed that phosphate and calcium would have little effect. After years of scientific influence from studies on isomorphism, specific volume, and adhesive forces, as well as the studies of European scientists, Dmitry Mendeleev's famous periodic table would be born. In 1867, Mendeleev became a chemistry professor at the University of St. Petersburg. While teaching, Mendeleev found that he could not recommend any good chemistry textbooks for his students and set about writing his own. When Mendeleev wrote his chemistry textbook, he took influences from Stanislaw Kanitsaro's established atomic weights of the elements. These atomic weights would ultimately determine the layout of Mendeleev's periodic table. Patterns in the atomic weights of elements had been noted before Mendeleev, and Mendeleev used these patterns as well. While analyzing atomic weights, Mendeleev noted that a nearly perfect table could be constructed based on increasing atomic weights. In addition to atomic weights, Mendeleev also organized his periodic table based on the valences of the elements. At the time, chemists would differentiate the valences of elements such as sodium and chlorine in relation to hydrogen and oxygen to avoid confusion. To calculate the valences of the elements, Mendeleev's work on organic chemistry paid off, and he was able to construct a table with oxygen as the base for valence. Starting from the first basic elements, Mendeleev was able to place the other known elements into the table and predict the existence of eight new elements, such as germanium, gallium, and scandium. Additionally, he was able to predict their properties with a great degree of precision. After making some changes and publishing the final version of the table in 1871, Mendeleev's periodic table was published in a magazine in Germany and spread throughout Europe, paving the way for the modern periodic table. After the publication of the periodic table, Mendeleev worked on many other topics. While working at the University of St. Petersburg, Mendeleev worked on gas pressure and was funded by the Russian Chemical Society. Mendeleev aimed to find the relationship between the pressure and elasticity of a gas, 
finding that as gases are depressurized, they approach a point of inelasticity determined by the properties of the gas. This work on gases made Mendeleev hypothesize about the existence of two gases lighter than hydrogen found in space, which was, suffice to say, false. Stemming from his studies on gases, Mendeleev worked on meteorology and planned to construct a balloon capable of taking him to study the higher atmosphere and observe a solar eclipse. In addition to studying the atmosphere, Mendeleev also created a ship to explore the far north. Mendeleev continued to lecture at the University of St. Petersburg until 1890, when he resigned from the university. His lectures, although centered around chemistry, would often stray into other fields of science, such as biology, physics, astronomy, and geology. Mendeleev encouraged his students to analyze and piece together the known sciences, for which he was famous for. For some time, Mendeleev worked in the field of chemical technology, experimenting with explosives and petroleum. He created a new explosive, now named Pyrocolodion, for the Russian Navy, which was similar to trinitrotoluene, but had the advantage of being more reactive and energetic. After traveling to America to learn about the use of petroleum, Mendeleev also hoped to create the first oil refinery in Russia and stressed the importance of the petrochemicals obtained from petroleum. Dmitry Mendeleev died on the 2nd of February in 1907, at the age of 72, in St. Petersburg, Russia. For his work in chemistry and other fields of science, Mendeleev received many awards and became a foreign member of the Royal Society. Mendeleev never received the Nobel Prize due to the opposition of Svante Arrhenius. And, contrary to popular belief, Mendeleev never created the recipe for Russian vodka. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, favorite the video, share it with your friends, or even subscribe for more videos. Check out other videos on this channel, or check out the featured channels for more content.